Why do the chicken coops only have two doors? Because if they had four, it would be chicken sedans. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. What do you call a laughing motorcycle? A Yamaha. <laughs> a Yamaha. Ha 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 ha. Who is the greatest babysitter mentioned in the Bible? David. He rocked Goliath to sleep. At what time of day was Adam created? A little before Eve. Get out of here. What do you call a cow with no legs? Ground beef. <laughs> All right, what do you call a fish with two knees? A two knee fish. Two knee? <laughs> I know, it took me a little long. I, late. A cop just knocked on my door and told me that my dogs were chasing people on bikes. My dogs don't even own bikes. <laughs> Did you know the first french fries weren't actually cooked in France? They were cooked in Greece. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Who wrote that one? I tried to eat a clock the other day. It was really time consuming. <laughs> mwah, mwah. <laughs> Who was the smallest person in the Bible? Nia. <laughs> <laughs> Nehemiah. <laughs> Need an ark? I know a guy. <laughs> How does Moses start his morning? Anybody? Hebrews, a pot of coffee. <laughs> Jeez, nice. Can February March? No, but April May. <laughs> Who was the greatest comedian in the Bible? Samson. He brought the house down. <laughs> yeah. Those are awful. Awfully good. Just like what I grew up with. Welcome to the Russellville Community Church on this June the 21st of 2020. And welcome back into our church and our, to our worship team here at our church for our service today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for bringing us into your homes. And may God bless each and every one of you. Uh, I'd like to recall a little thing from my past. Um, it's a German phrase. It's called Gott mit uns. And again, I'll say it one more time, Gott mit uns. Um, my grandfather was a primitive Baptist minister. And uh, they were second generation Germans over here. And they um, naturally spoke German, especially around their grandkids when they didn't want their grandkids to know what they were talking about. And every morning as he would go out the door, either she or he would say to the other, Gott mit uns. And I was probably six or seven years old until I finally found out what it really meant. But it translates out of German into English that God is with us. And it's really interesting for us to have that thought this morning. So let's keep that with us during this service, that God is truly with us. Hear these words from John Van Delar. We all face moments of decision when we have to choose whether to preserve our own lives through silence and compliance with those who threaten us or others, or to endure ridicule, persecution, and rejection for speaking out for what we truly believe is right. When we refuse to laugh at racist, homophobic, or chauvinistic jokes, we put ourselves in the firing line. When we stand alongside those whom others want to judge and reject, we risk being rejected and judged by ourselves by association. Yet if we fail to stand up for our convictions, we lose something from our own souls. And we contribute to making the world an unsafe and threatening place for anyone who is different in any way, shape, or form. While it may hurt to live out 
the welcoming, forgiving, serving, peaceful, and justice-seeking value of God's reign in Christianity, to fail to do so hurts us and our world far more. We are challenged this week to love the gospel above all, for only then will we live as people who truly and selfishly love family, friends, neighbors, and even enemies as God's call us to. Let us worship God's to get God together as God is truly with us. Come, now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to give your heart. Come, just as you are to worship. Come, just as you are before your God. confess you are God one day every knee will bow still the greatest treasure remains for us we'll gladly choose you now come now is the time to worship come now is the time to give your heart come just as you are to worship come just as you are before your God come one day every time you confess you are God one day every knee will bow Still the greatest treasure remains for us We'll gladly choose you now Our call to worship. Discipleship is never easy. People don't understand when you say you want to serve the Lord. 
They think you are peculiar, and they are fearful. But the Lord is with us, giving us courage and strength. There is much work that needs to be done, and we cannot be slowed down by those who don't understand or are fearful of serving the Lord. Come, Lord, inspire us with your power and presence. Be with us as we prepare to be your disciples. Amen. Good morning, and happy Father's Day to you all. In our announcements today, we have a very big announcement to give here, the, the church service reopening. The executive committee, along with the worship team, met this last week and discussed when to reopen our worship service. Several things were taken into consideration, and they have decided that June 28th, next Sunday, will be our first worship service publicly together since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic. We'll be meeting, though, in the Russellville Community Center. Uh, this will give us the opportunity to practice social distancing, which is recommended as we meet together as a group. Those of you who are 65 and over or may have an underlying health condition, we would like for you to strongly consider not attending. It, the service will be videotaped and you'll be able to have a videotape of it, but this, this is your decision. We will, as I said, be carrying on social distancing. There will be no greeter at the door. We will not have offering passed around an offering tray. And that this time we are not having communion as we always have it. We will be discussing that further later. We also will not be uh, singing hymns or songs. It has been found that uh, this quickly spreads germs. So we'll just let Haley sing our songs and Debbie play the piano and we will enjoy listening to them. Face masks will be provided, but are not mandatory. So we look forward to worshiping with you this coming Sunday, June 28th. Uh, there'll be no Sunday school at this time. June 29th and July 2nd is virtual Bible school. Get on board the Rocky Railroad. Jesus' power pulls us through. If you'd like for your child to join us virtually, of course, send your child's name in the grade they just finished to Susie Nichols at jsnichols at tds.net or on the Russellville Community Facebook book, put that information, or on Messenger to Kathy Jones, and we'll see that your child receives a packet. Reminder that Clothe a Child is reopening uh, June 24th, and any kind of orders for clothing need to be received by Friday, June 19th for the June 24th pickup. And then July 15th, the center will also be open for clothing pickup, and those requests must be in by July 10th. Clothing, clothe the child volunteers will do the best to fill the orders, and the clothing can be picked up at the Russville Community Church parking lot on June 24th, as I said, and July 15th from 6 to 7 p.m. For our birthdays, happy birthday, Robert Switzer Jr. It's today, the 21st. Happy birthday to Kathy Jones, coming the 23rd. Happy birthday, Kathy, and Lucas Wyatt's birthday is the 26th. And a happy anniversary today to Mitch and Judy Proctor and Mike and Jennifer Simpson on the 26th of June. So happy anniversary to both these couples. Now in our prayer requests, we want to remember the family of Donald Simpson. A lot of you, or maybe most of you, know of Donald Simpson. He is active and was active in the North Putnam athletic program and um, was involved in the North Putnam School Corporation. Donald has passed away, and we want to remember his family at this time. Also want to remember J.J. Smith. He's been admitted to a hospice center, and we want to remember J.J. Smith. Continue to pray for Cindy Wyatt. Eloise Seabrass, Jean Clodfelter, and Kay Call, and Nancy Carroll. These are people still on our, on our prayer list. Keep in prayer, the nursing home residents and employees, they're still in a, in a tough position. And uh, I don't know how, much, how, when uh, families will be able to visit, but that's got to be very difficult for them. Continue to remember the doctors, the nurses, 
the hospital technicians, the lab technicians, the emergency responders, all involved in watching over us and our health. As businesses open, we want to remember these essential business employees. As we pick up those things that are, are important to us, they are there serving us. And we need to remember that uh, they are doing that and we thank them for that. We continue to remember the farmers and all agricultural workers at this time. Let us pray. Lord, you have heard our prayer concerns. The family of Donald Simpson, remember J.J. Smith both at this time. Continue to open our hearts to those who need our prayers and continue to listen to our prayers as we lift them up to you. Lord, we pray at this time that you watch over us all here as we battle through this, this COVID-19 pandemic together. Let us make good decisions and let us come together and, and make those decisions that will help people and not hurt them. Continue to be with those in government as they make those same types of decisions for us. And Lord, we thank you for fathers and people who are in the position of fathering children. We thank you for them and how they show their love to their children. We thank you also, Lord, for that prayer that you gave to Jesus, who in turn gave it to his disciples, and finally it came to us, the Lord's Prayer. And praying, we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our first scripture reading will be Psalm 86, a prayer of David. Hear me, Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Guard my life, for I am faithful to you. Sir, save your servant who trusts you. You are my God. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I call to you all day long. Bring joy to your servant, Lord, for I put my trust in you. You, Lord, are forgiving and good abounding in love to all who call to you. Hear my prayer, Lord. Listen to my cry for mercy. When I am in distress, I call to you, because you answer me. Among the gods there is none like you, Lord. No needs can compare with yours. All the nations you have made will come and worship before you, Lord. They will bring glory to your name. For you are great, and do marvelous deeds. You are alone, Lord. Teach me your way, Lord, that I may rely on your faithfulness. Give me an undivided heart, that I may fear your name. I will praise you, Lord my God, with all my heart. I will glorify your name forever, for great is your love toward me. You have delivered me from the depths, from the realm of the dead. Arrogant foes are attacking me, O God. Ruthless people are trying to kill me. They have no regard for you. But you, Lord, are a compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. Turn to me and have mercy on me. Show your strength in behalf of your servant. Save me because I serve you. Just as my mother did, Give me a sign of your goodness, that my enemies may see it and be put to shame. For you, Lord, have helped me and confronted me. Our second scripture will be presented by Jeff.
Jeremiah 27 through 13. You deceived me, Lord, and I was deceived. You overpowered me and prevailed. I am ridiculed all day long. Everyone mocks me. Whenever I speak, I cry out, proclaiming violence and destruction. So the word of the Lord has brought me insult and reproach all day long. But if I say, I will not mention his word or speak any more in his name, his word is on my heart like a fire, a fire shut up in my bones. I am weary of holding it in. Indeed, I cannot. I hear many whispering, terror on every side. Denounce him. Let's denounce him. All my friends are waiting for me to slip, saying, Perhaps he will be deceived. Then we will prevail over him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a mighty warrior, so my persecutors will stumble and not prevail. They will fail and be thoroughly disgraced. Their dishonor will never be forgotten. Lord Almighty, you who examine the righteous and probe the heart of and mind, let me see your vengeance on them, for to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, give praise to the Lord. He rescues the life of the needy from the hands of the wicked. And now, with a few words about Father's Day, here's our very own Aaron Mills, played by Susie Nichols. Hello, my name's Aaron Mills, and this is my brother George. Today is a day called Daddy's Day. If you go by what you see on TV cartoons, Daddy's Day is a day for giving your daddy lots of ugly ties. That's ugly. I'm not sure why people suggest this, though, because my daddy's the kind of guy who'd rather hold my mommy's purse in the grocery store than put on a tie. When he's not working, he's in a smelly old t-shirt, fixing his car, or crashing his thinking chair, watching scary old movies like Godzilla vs. Oprah. Unless it's baseball season, then he sits around watching the Boston Red Sox. It's the dumbest name for a sports team I've ever heard. I mean, come on! They spell it with an X. I don't know about you, but I've never seen two socks that match like they do, much less a whole team. But as much as Daddy loves his baseball, he loves us more, right, George? George really likes Daddy. He says he's his hero. Personally, if I was in danger of a bad guy and needed a hero, I'd rather have Spider-Man come save me. I mean, if there's a chance he's going to get hurt, I'd rather be Spidey with his spider strength than my dad, who turns into a big baby when he gets a paper cut. But when it comes to snuggling, watching scary movies, I'd take Daddy 11 times out of 10. My Sunday school teacher said, the math doesn't add up there. But what does she know? She teaches Sunday school, not math. Daddy works a lot of hours, so we only get to see him at night during the week, which is okay, because George and I have our own careers to think of. George is studying to be an astronaut. I'm pre, pre, pre-med, but every night daddy's home to eat dinner with us, and every weekend it's a daddy po palooza. <laughs> a daddy palooza. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's even a real word. I think daddy made it up. He's always making up silly things, like our bedtime stories. Every night he comes in and tells us another story that he's made up all on his own. <laughs> daddy even made us a theme song too. Isn't he great? But every night after the story, he tells us a Bible story. And it's not all boring like some people imagine the Bible to be. He does the voices and sound effects and everything. Daddy wants us to know the Bible because he wants us to know Jesus, like he does. He loves Jesus a lot. We know because we see him praying every now and then, and because he listens to an old gospel quartet. Daddy says he's trying to be the best daddy he can. If you ask us, he really does a good job. He takes great care of our mommy, and he loves us very much. Which is why George wants to be just like him when he grows up. And me, I want to marry someone just like him. How about a little rice for the, for the wedding? We hope you take some time to depreciate your daddy today as well. 
Make him a pretty card with some destruction paper and macaroni and tell him you love him. And if all else fails, come see George and me after church and we'll sell you those ugly ties that we brought, bought for our daddy but never gave him. Thank you, George and Aaron, or as we know them better, Jeff and Susie, for showing us the most important gift that we can give to our fathers, and that is our love. And thank you also for showing the gift that the fathers can give to their children, and that is being a good example. The father who reads Bible stories and is there for his children is the example that we're talking about. And I ask that you continue, kids, to listen to your parents and obey them. And parents, I ask that you continue to provide good examples for your children as you raise them. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you today, especially for fathers and those fathers who are raising their children and providing good examples for them. And we pray that you be with them. And Lord, continue to guide children as they obey their fathers and look to them and give them love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The text for my message today comes from Matthew chapter 10, verses 24 through 39. The student is not above the teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for students to be like their teachers and servants like their masters. If the head of the house has been called Beelzebub, how much more are the members of his household? So do not be afraid of them. For there is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed or hidden that will not be made known. What I tell you in the dark, speak in the daylight. What is whispered in your ear, proclaim from the roofs. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground outside your father's care. And even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Whoever acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before the others, I will disown before my Father in heaven. Do not suppose I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be the members of his own household. Anyone who loves her father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. And whoever finds their life will lose it. And whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. Now, last Sunday, Jesus recruited the disciples to carry his message to the Jewish people. Now, today, before he sends them forth, he wants to explain some things to them. In fact, a whole lot of things. He wants them to fully understand what they're volunteering for. And he covers the tasks that they are to carry out. He says, as you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, and drive out demons. Then he tells them what they will face in carrying out this mission. First of all, they're going to have conflict with the powers that control their world, especially the Jewish authorities. Next, there's going to be opposition and violence against them for what they say and do, even from their own family. And another one is that they will have to give up worldly concerns such as wealth, comfort, and status. Now, as we look at this passage, we can also see what we will face if we carry out this same message and mission. Maybe not as potentially life-threatening, but still likely to create conflict as it did in the disciples' lives. First of all, we will have conflict with friends and family. We don't all agree or believe the same things. And you're going to run into some people as you express your opinions who are not going to agree with you. And it may be people in your own family. People angry with us over what we say or don't say, or what we do or don't do. It's our, when we make our choice and these people say they don't agree with that, then there's gonna be some conflict. Now, it may cost us 
both monetarily and as much as a reputation as we seek to help those in need. Not everybody agrees that everybody needs help who asks for it. And that will make conflict, not only among family members, church members, committee members, and a lot of other people. So if you decide to carry out what you feel is the Lord's mission, it is not going to be without conflict. And it is going to cost you monetarily. Listen to this example. I thought this was very interesting. This is a man, Millard Fuller, who chose to follow the directions of God, and we'll see what it cost him as far as monetarily. Years ago, a man named Millard Fuller was pretty near the apex of the American success story. He was a high-octane corporate executive working eight days a week and pulling down close to a million dollars a year. Now, back then, that was a lot of money, and it still is, of course. But then one day, he heard God calling him, telling his, him his life was over full and his priorities were out of whack. So in prayer with his wife, one day, Fuller recommitted his life to Christ. He quit his job, moved to a more modest house, and wondered what to do next. What he ended up doing next was building affordable houses for low-income families who could purchase these homes interest-free. Today, we are most of us well aware of the great good Habitat for Humanity and what it's done for people. A preacher once recounted Fuller's story, but was later approached by someone who said, well, how old were Fuller's children when he quit his job like that? It took the preacher a minute to appreciate what lay behind this query. How dare Fuller uproot his kids and subject them to a least lavish lifestyle just so he could serve God? There is an example of what I have been talking about. And that is just the way lots of people think these days. Taking up a cross to follow Jesus is, even economically for some, as unpopular now as ever. Now, this example shows how carrying out Jesus' mission can create conflict. Now, we probably won't carry out Jesus' mission in such a big way or cause such a big change in our family's living condition, but it will happen sometimes when we carry out Jesus' mission in our mind. A friend of mine participated in the Black Lives Matter demonstration downtown Greencastle. And I was recently talking to him, and he is now in conflict with his parents. They don't agree with what he did, and this is causing trouble. So this is not just something that has been written down in books. This actually really happens. And my prayer is that these, he, him, and his parents will be able to seek some type of peaceful agreement and come back together, and that he can talk about and take part in what he believes is important. And so what about the times, and I got to thinking this, and I think we probably all have been involved in this. You're sitting around the table with some friends and someone cracks a racist joke. And what happens? Do you laugh with everybody else? Do you not laugh? Do you get up and leave the table? What do you do? Do you say, well, that was not a real considerate joke? What do you do? Again, not as serious as what the disciples had to do, but maybe in some ways, in some ways, effective your actions. If you take the right actions, it's going to be very effective. I had that happen one time. I was sitting around with a bunch of guys and somebody told the story making fun of not only African Americans, but the Jewish people and homosexuals. And the whole story came to an end and I got up and walked out. I don't regret that. I think it was very important that I did that at that time. But it has consequences. Jesus told the disciples, what you're doing will have consequences. You're fulfilling my mission, but there will be consequences. And so you have to consider that. Now, sometimes when we sit there and laugh with, each, with the, everybody that laughs, sometimes in the words of Robert Cornwall, we just go along to get along. We can't keep doing that. We cannot keep doing that. It, it, it's, it's easy. It's, there's no conflict, but we can't keep doing that. We can't go along just to get along. John Vandelar, one of my favorite writers, talks about it. When we refuse to laugh at racist, 
homophobic or chauvinistic jokes, we put ourselves on the firing line. When we stand alongside those whom others want to judge and reject, we risk being rejected and judged ourselves. When we refuse to participate in acts of violence or retribution against our enemies, we may be seen as traitors. In our, va- in our own families and churches, when we begin to embrace beliefs and values that are different from the norm, we may be disowned or excommunicated. We are afraid that standing up for what we believe may cause us to lose friends or status in our company, our family, our church, or our community. We may be subject to ridicule or gossip or even more. So you can see that carrying out the mission given to us by Jesus has some consequences. And some of them, as in the case of the disciples, some fearful consequences. But it's very interesting to note that throughout this this reading that I did, the text, Jesus tells the disciples three times, fear not, fear not. He reassures his disciples that with God present, it will work out. Now, Jeremiah, the prophet who was uh, persecuted for speaking the truth, uh, still continued to trust in God's salvation. And that was the Old Testament reading we had today, but I want to reread this for you. Listen to Jeremiah. O Lord, you have enticed me, and I was enticed. You have overpowered me, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughing stock all day long. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I must cry out. I must shout violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and derision of all day long. If I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, then within me there is something like a burning fire shut up in my bones." I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot, for I hear many whispering, terror is all around, denounce him, let us denounce him. All my close friends are watching me to stumble. Perhaps he can be enticed, and we can prevail against him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a dread warrior, therefore my persecutors will stumble, and they will not prevail. They will be greatly shamed, for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, you test the righteous. You see the heart and mind. Let me see your retribution upon them. For to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord. Praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of evildoers. Wow. Old Testament, Jeremiah was experiencing what Jesus told his disciples they may experience and what we carried from the scripture into our own lives that maybe and not as terrible, but that we will experience retribution. And so here it is. God is out there and God sends a message and said, I want you to help those in need. So what's our answer going to be? I think you're, you're, you're aware of this song. It's a beautiful song. I want, to read the, uh, I want to read the lyrics to you. Here I am, Lord. Listen to this and see how it, how it lays in line with what I've been speaking about in my sermon. I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry. All who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I, who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright. Who will bear my light to them? Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord. If you lead me, I will hold your people in my heart. I, the Lord of snow and rain, I have borne my people's pain. I have wept for love of them. They turn away. I will break their hearts of stone, give them hearts for love alone. I will speak my word to them. Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord. If you lead me, I will hold your people in my heart. I, the Lord of wind and flame, I will tend the poor and lame, I will set a feast for them, my hand will save. Finest bread I will provide, till their hearts be satisfied. 
Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will hold your people in my heart. And so when you hear the Lord call to you in the night or any time, go and answer that call. Know that there will be some consequences. But with the Lord leading you, you will be certain that whatever the consequences may be, that he will be there to protect you. Amen. knew that it was very important that he tell his disciples what to expect as he sent them out into the world on that mission that he gave to them. He also knew that they needed to have support from him. And one way that he could give them support and not be there physically with them was through communion, a way to remember him. They remembered that night in the upper room on the night he was arrested. And they remembered that he took the loaf and he broke it. And he said, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat. And he took the cup. And as he poured it out, he said, this is a cup of the new covenant. As often as you eat of the loaf or drink of the cup, do so in remembrance of me. Let us give thanks for the loaf. Oh, Lord, we thank you for this loaf. And more than that, we thank you that it represents Jesus and his sacrifice for us and his love for us so that when we receive that call to go out on a mission, we know that he is with us. As we partake of this meal, we also experience his love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Take and eat. Let us give thanks for the cup. Lord, part of that remembrance is the remembrance of his sacrifice. It was very difficult for the disciples as they saw it and as they experienced him being crucified. But then in communion, he told them that that crucifixion, that shedding of blood was to forgive their sins and to allow them then to being a new partnership with God, and that they never forgot, and nor do we. I bless this cup as we partake. So as you go about this week, and you feel God's calling you to send you out on a mission, maybe it's to... Uh, to call the lady next door that hasn't had anybody coming to see her, or to carry a newspaper to someone. Whatever that mission is, remember that it may not be without consequences. And it, it may be that you will want a God on your side. Remember that. And I invite you next week to worship with us at the Russville Community Center at 1030. 
In Jesus' name I pray, amen.